The year was 1984, and he was a Whitney in Saratoga. And I've been riding Miss Lou Gold, and he was doing marvelous. He was training very good. John Hedley just got him from Sydney Water, and they took him to Aqua, and I guess the change of a track in his mind, he made a happy horse that he never was a happy horse. They put three horses in a race, and one of the horses was track Baron, which he was a three-year-old. The other horse was just in there to go. I was kidding around with Jim Kruger that was riding trap bar and he was winning with him and I said, you know, this is not even going to be a match. I said, this is like Muhammad Ali fighting with you. And he goes, oh, you can beat my horse. I said, you're crazy. I said, you know, i tell you what I'm going to do, Gene. And every time we go A to the mile, I'm going to remind you that I'm on the best horse. I was kidding around with him. And do me a favor. I said, don't use him too much because I need him for the travels in two weeks. And I want a fresh horse. And I was kidding around with him because I never dreamed that I was going to ride him. Uh, now we go to the race and we leave in the jackets room and I said to Jim, you have your seat belts? I said, you're going to need it. I draw the one hole on the three horse field. I wasn't worried about the other horse. My only concern was make Jim use his horse the first part. So this way I don't have to use my horse that much. I wasn't worried about getting beat. I was just worried about not putting a hard race on my horse because he was going to come back and run on the triple crown for all the horses and I needed a fresh horse. When we left the gate, I was sure that I broke good. We run to the first ten and Kruger looked at me, he's on my outside and he's trying to outrun me. So I let my horse run going into the turn. I put up our head. He realized he kind of run me. So just to be sure that he didn't bother me or pull one of his game, I start drifting out a little bit. At the time before we get the backside, we have about three horses from the fence. So things happened the way I wanted. He pulls off on the outside, he drops inside, and I knew what he was going to do. He was going to go inside and ask his horse to run, to take control on the inside. He asked his horse to run, and I point my horse to him, and we hook from the three-quarter pole inside Toga. And every time we went at 60, I didn't even wait at eight to him. Every time we went at 16 to the mile, I said, take it easy, Gina, I want to abuse you. And he was chirping and riding the whole way. And I looked at him again, take it easy, you're going to get my horse tired. The more I talked to him, the angry he got, and the more he was riding. When we got to the half of my, I got so much all on my horse, it looked like I was galloping in the morning. And he's driving, and his horse is keeping up because he was a good horse. He was riding, and I kept talking to him. I said, oh boy, this is going to be fun when we turn for home. Jane, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my whip in my back, and I'm not going to use them. And I kept talking to him. The more I talked to him, the more he shirked to his horse. Now we're ready to turn for home, and I took a pic to see, just to see what the other horse was. I couldn't even see the other horse. So I got close to him. I said, OK, Jim, it's only you and I. Be careful. Don't get my horse too tired. And they kept riding it. I never won on a horse in a big race as easy as I was that day on Slugo. He galloped. He was like a workout for him. And he was enjoying what he was doing. And he was the first time Slugo ever was happy with his ears up in the air. He was on grouchy. He was really, probably would have took him one of the greatest horses to beat in that particular day. As it turned out, that was the easiest big race that I won in the Whitney. It was one of them dreams that you plan and he wake out he wound up doing the same thing that you planted it, but it was the easiest witness I ever went.